Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast, episode number 134 of the show. Uh, I'm Ramon Neum, here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. And I have eight new Lit RPG reviews, just so you folks at home. Before we begin, I want to give a quick shout out to our newest Patreon supporters uh, on Patreon. Uh, Lachlan Frickmont, Havlar Havakand, and J.S. Grilke. Who are helping to get the podcast free and ad free? So thank you guys uh, and/or ladies uh, for your generous support on Patreon. Uh, so thank you, Ian Lachlan, Havlar, and JS. And of course, if anyone else wants to help support the podcast uh, on Patreon, you can go to uh, Patreon.com/slash Keep Eyes Podcast. So there you go. Um, we have, of course, again eight new reviews for you folks at home, including uh, first login, the World Book. Uh, after that, it'll be Urbarine Passage, a little bit of mystery. Then it'll be Traveler Zone, a lit RPG YA fantasy, the Revelation Revelation Chronicles book number two, the long title. Uh, and then it'll be Coast on Fire, the System Apocalypse book number five. After that, it is going to be uh, The Wang is the Hardest Part, uh, Caverns and Creatures. Then it is going to be the Song Mystery, the Little Pretty Journey, Uniworld Online Trilogy, book number two in that series. Uh, and then it's going to be Shard Wraith, a lit RPG novel. And last but not least, it is going to be First Song, book one of the Anthem Infinity series. So there we go. Before we get into that, we're going to go into lit RPG news. And in Lit RPG News, we're going to begin with uh, free books. That's always nice, isn't it? Uh, author S.L. Rowland of the uh, PMG Online series. Uh, the first book in the period series, the author has been nice enough to put it out for free on Amazon until September the 23rd. So if you have any chance to go read it, it's good. Go check it out. And it's free, so you can't beat the price. So there you go. Uh, also in Lit RPG News, we have Travis Bagwell, author of the Awaken Online series. He's doing a giveaway um, all you have to do is comment on the Facebook page for the contest. We'll have a link in the show notes for that particular link specifically. And uh, you're supposed to comment in the, in the comment section what race, class, and build you would pick if you were going to start playing Awaken Online. Uh, and he's given away some posters and concept art stuff um, with original artwork on there. So really, really cool, interesting uh, posters. So go check them out. And again, the link in the show notes for that particular contest. Uh, also, James A. Hunter, author of the Viridian Gate series, uh, has started a Patreon page finally. The man's been s- slow on this. He has like multiple series out, multiple books, and he's just starting a Patreon page. Uh, some of the words, if you don't know the Patreon page, basically you help support uh, your favorite artists, authors, whatever the case is, uh, by giving them a recurring monthly donation. Uh, a lot of times there are going to be like tiers or rewards depending on how much you're 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 supporting them obviously um and some of those rewards in this particular case include early access to writing some exclusive artwork copies of the ebooks uh like whole sets of novels um posters signed physical books and so much more i believe the highest tier there um is something like a thousand dollars a month i can't remember but uh it's like the author it will come fly to you personally if you live in the united states uh give you a signed copy of the book and then take you to near so you know, if you have the extra grand, uh, it is not the worst way to to spend it, <laughs> supporting an author that you like. So there you go. But again, if you're a fan of, of James A. Hunter, they've written get an alliance or anything that Shadow Alley Press does, um, go to the page one. Go support him. It's it's fun. Okay. Uh, also, in new stuff from a lot of RPG authors, uh, Dana Schienhofen, author of the Alpha World series, Lot Horizon series, Binding World series, <laughs> and the Apocalypse Gate series, has finally joined the modern world and made a website. That's right. Finally, he, he has a website. He's kind of been um, mostly seen on a few Facebook pages that he has and some other places like i think he has a discord chat room uh but he's finally made a web page and it's there so it's uh, shinhofenbooks.com um it is an http site so there's no s on that so that's unfortunate but he has a nice commission artwork there for you to look at for free he also has a link to his blogs and all the social media links he has there so go check it out if you're a fan of that series um there are some very interesting art things there so there you go uh also in some news uh, this is actually just 
nice news about a little bit of authors doing well. Dakota Kraut uh, recently had the second audiobook in his completion as Chronicle series released, and it's been doing really well. Um, it hit number two in sci-fi and fantasy, number 37 in all of the uh, of the audiobooks on Audible, and number one in epic fantasy and science fiction and cyberpunk. Uh, so congrats on that, man. I just want to give a quick shout out to you. Anytime a, a Little Bridge author um, does really well, it's always good for the community. It's good for everybody. So I'm also super proud of my friend. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Also, speaking of Dakota Rout, if you don't know, he's also not only one of the most popular Little Bridge authors, but he also started his own publishing company called Mountaindale Press. Uh, he recently released, the, released a list of the first titles to come out from that company, including the new, new Divine Dungeon novel. So great news all around. Excuse me. Let's see. So here's the list from his company. Um, on October the 5th, it'll be Red Mage Advent by Xander Boyce. On October the 12th, it'll be Pixel Dust Party Hard um, by David Pitry. And that one, the author, um, Dakota, mentioned to me, oh, this is that this one is Gamelet. It's not necessarily a little bit G. Um, but apparently all the stuff that's going to come out of this published company are focused around Gamelet and Little Bridge Novels specifically. Um, October the 19th is A Touch of Power uh, Siphon by J. Boyce Siphon. Um, on October the 26th, it'll be Peaks of Power Beginnings by Paul Campbell. Uh, November the 2nd, it'll be The Divine Dungeon, Dungeon Desolation. So that'll be the fourth book, I think, in that particular series. So all kinds of new things that are also be in the upcoming list of Little RPG, which will be in a few minutes. Okay, uh, last story in Little RPG news. About two, last month, um, book two in the Altera Online series by M. Colray was published. It was called Faithful Defender. Unfortunately, some readers reported that instead of getting book two in the series, they just got a copy of book one, and they were a little annoyed, and they might have left a couple bad reviews. Um, I reached out to the author for a comment. He was nice enough to respond, so I'm going to read you his response. Um, Thanks for reaching out. It's appreciated. Yes, there was an issue. Due to an error, the original Goddess Watch manuscript was uploaded instead of the Faithful Defender manuscript. The error lasted approximately 36 hours from September 9th to the evening of September the 10th. My VA, virtual assistant, brought it to my attention and uploaded the correct file, but the damage was done. I was camping at the time and had no idea anything had gone wrong. My editor who had sent the new file in didn't check my email. Mistakes that won't happen again version is live now and i'd appreciate any mention you can make i'm very sorry that this happened to people as i'm canadian and the amazon canada site doesn't allow gifting i am limited in what i can do i believe that if readers delete the book from their kindle and then redownload it they should get the correct version otherwise they think they would have to return the book and repurchase it thanks again for reaching out to me i'm sorry this happened to anyone this is the nightmare scenario of any author as i'm sure you know so there we go that's a note from the author um just kind of commenting on what happened. So it's it, it had happened to multiple authors that I've known where you just accidentally click on the wrong <laughs> icon in your on your computer and you, you sent an older version of your manuscript or just an entirely different book in that series. And then you got to fix it. And it takes a little while sometimes. Um, so it does happen to a lot of us. Um, but in this case, the author wasn't aware of it for a good 36 hours. So the folks who got the manuscript in that particular time frame can hopefully get the correct version of it. So there we go. Okay, on to some titles that are out now. Haven't read them or reviewed them. Um, and this includes Southern Kingdom Evolution Online, book number two. Um, I have not read the first book, but I have looked it over to see that it is Little RPG. So uh, the second book of the series is out currently. Um, the third book in the Stonehaven Leaks series by Carrie Summers, Caverns of Spirits, uh, is out right now. So go check that out. Um, Infinite, ex sorry, I should say that's a pretty out. By the time most people see this, I should be, I think, on the 21st. Um, so there you go. Um, Infinite Exodus, a sci-fi little bit Infinite Exodus book number one. That should be out currently as well, as is Free Haven Online, Lady Thunderbird, Into Hades, a little RPG adventure. Again, this, uh, by, most, by the time most people see this particular podcast, that should be out as well on September the 21st. Uh, but also out currently is FPS Deity, a fantasy lit RPG series, book number one. So, um, two, three, four, five, five new lit RPG titles that again just just came out. Uh, so we haven't had a chance to put the read them or put them on the podcast. Okay, now there are a few new lit RPG audiobooks that are out right now, including Rogue Dungeon, a lit RPG adventure by um, excuse me James Hunter and Eden Hudson. Uh, that is out currently. Good, nice, nice lit RPG story. Um, also, Regicide, the Completionist Chronicle series, book number two by Dakota Kraut. This is the one I was talking about before that has been doing super well on Audible. Uh, so there you go. Uh, also out now is Free Haven Online, book number one, Dragon's Mane. 
Um, and the third book in the Threadbare series, The Right to Bear Arm, or to the right to Arm Bears, rather. Um, a cute title. Um, it is a good story. Um, it completes the, trilo- the trilogy in that Threadbare series. So all those little bit of audiobooks are out now. Uh, on to the upcoming Little Bird Dealers, where I just read off a bunch of titles that are coming out in the near future. There are quite a few new additions to this particular list, so if you're interested, hang around. If not, skip ahead to the actual reviews. Okay, um, September 24th, Reality Benders book number three called Game Changers. Uh, on the September the 26th, it'll be Free Haven Online, Lady Thunderbird into Hades. Actually, that one, um, you know what? I think I already put that out. Yeah, because that's already out now. It came out a little bit early, and I just forgot to take it off the upcoming list. So there you go. That's out. Um, on September 28th, Couch Potato Chaos. Uh, there you go. September the 30th, Rebirth Online, a little RPG adventure will be out. On October the 1st, The Arena's Call, The Adventures on Brad Book Number 4. On October the 5th, will be Red Mage Advent. That's one of the um, Mountain Dale um, press novels. On October the 8th, it'll be Kingdom of the Dead, NPC's Path, book number two. October the 12th will bring us Dan the Destroyer, uh, the third book in the Gold Girls in Glory series. On October the 16th, it'll be Pharaoh, book number 11, The Blades of the Borderlands. Also new to the list, it'll be October the 14th will be Random, The Chaos of Lincoln Heart, uh, Brackador, book number six. So there you go. Um, on October the 19th, Siphon, It's Such a Power. Again, another one of those Mountain Dale Press books we mentioned before. Very, very interesting cover art. Uh, also, Peaks of Power Beginnings on October the 26th. Uh, on October the 31st, new to the list, is going to be Base Status Online, An Unlikely Hero's Little RPG Journey. Um, from the description in the actual, that sounds a little cyberpunky, but the author uh, wrote in and read into the podcast and said it is Little RPG, so I have any chance to read it to gain see it either way, but you know, it'll be out on the 31st of October. On November the 1st, Never Fall Mark of the Hero book number one will be out. On November the 2nd, Dungeon Desolation. So there you go. That's the fourth book in the Divine Dungeon series. On November the 8th, it'll be The Parallel of Sci-Fi Letter G, Infinite Exodus, book number two, the first book in the series. It just came out this week. So, But the author already has a pre-order for book number two. Uh, on November the 18th, it'll be Guardians of the Round Table, book number three, Singed Feathers. On November the 19th, A Song of Shadow, The Bards of Barley, one of book number two. Uh, also new to the list, it'll be Island Kingdoms, Evolution Online, book number three. On November the 20th, again, book two in that series just came out this week. Uh, on December the 10th, Heroes, level up book number two. Super looking forward to that one. Uh, and then November 21st, Free Haven Online, uh, Dungeon, Winter Dungeon Land. So there we go. And I think I got my orders mixed up a little bit. But yeah, that's it. There we go, folks. On to the new releases and reviews. <laughs> And in new releases and reviews, folks, we're going to begin with uh, the, it's going to be called the, what is it actually called? Uh, first Login, The World, book number one. The title looks weird. It actually looks like on the title cover, Perry says The World, First Login, but it should be switched. Okay. Uh, it's 233 pages, $2.99. It's available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. Diving into a revolutionary new video game, Jason and his friends are working to move their entire guild to pro gamer status. Unlike the current line of MMORPGs and PVR MMORPGs, games on the market, a Fiverr MMORPG introduces a new gaming technology unlike anything experienced before. Choosing a nightmare start to get ahead of the wave of new players starting the game, Jason finds himself alone in the wilds, tasked with saving a group of refugees from goblin invaders. Although he manages to save the survivors that is that is just the beginning of his trials as he desperately fights to bring them back from the edge of annihilation. Jason is quickly swept up in the adventure as he struggles to bring a build a home for his guildmates and the NPCs that he saved. As the trouble heats up, he quickly discovers that marauding goblins are the least of his concerns. So there you go. Um, now there's a bit of controversy surrounding this, this particular novel, the story. The author admits in, in in the preface from the story that he's heavily inspired by um, the little RPG stories that came before him, including Ascend Online um, and a few other stories as well. But um, in my opinion, the author kind of takes that inspiration a little too far and actually copies word for word several sentences from ascend online directly like they're literally it feels like they're copy and pasted or you know maybe they're initially meant to be there as like placeholders for original content but they were never changed uh, but there is literally 
word for word um, copies. And it's not like simple sentences like, oh, I am a fighter or something. It's it's quest notifications. It's a character creation section. It's um, the early sections of that story have a very familiar plot setup. And, and as other people noted, when they look in the story, even the novel description of this particular novel is, 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 um, very similar to a send online uh, in, in, in a lot of different ways. Um, I actually did a whole article on the Liberty Podcast website, including like a page for page comparison for, for the places that are literally copied and they're the exact same sentences or very super similar sentences or, or paragraphs or request descriptions um, in the story. So, um, for example, uh, both stories have uh, the main characters being dropped in the middle of a battle with some goblin raiders, same name for the monsters as well, um, saving some NPCs from an attack with, again, literally the same quest descriptions and dialogue for each one of them, uh, in addition to some identical um, character creation scenes, almost. Um, then they're also being quest uh, tasked with getting resources to build that community. A very similar quest dialogue again, again, in the full article that I read about it. I actually just took screenshots and showed them side by side so you can see for yourself how, how uh, the, and compare the the exactness or the similarities in some cases uh, to the original story of, of the Send Online. However, again, after reading the entire novel in full, um, most of the story is actually original. It, it, it isn't, the, the story itself is not a copy of, of a sentinel line. Unfortunately, the author copied some sentences, copied some sentences rather. Um, after the finished framework of the story is actually completely original and it doesn't bear any further resemblance to a sentinel line. And as the series continues, the author actually put out books one, two, and three all at the same time. Uh, books two and three are also original to the author in, in their entirety. Um, it's just that copying and pasting someone else's work even in minor instances is not okay and to me it really doesn't make sense why somebody would go to the effort of like making so much original content that isn't again madly written um but still plagiarizing someone else's stories like by literally copying and pasting sentences from their story into yours um without taking the effort to just i don't know reword it change your story a little bit so it's not an exact copy in those particular instances um is what it is, though. Um, as the actual review of this particular story goes, it's not a badly written story. Um, there are a lot of game references. This novel is mostly meant to be a setup for the series. Um, and again, with the earlier parts of the game establishing Great McCred, introducing the main character and his friends, who you don't actually see in this particular novel. Um, and there's even small arcs for uh, player killer groups and some dungeon crawling. Um, the one complaint I probably have with the story is that the main character is just overpowered for his level. It's supposed to be like a bonus from being an early adopter of the game, but it makes the fights feel a little cheap when his stats are like 10 times bigger than what they should be necessarily for his level. Still, the fights are entertaining and the antagonist, antagonists in the story are fun to root against. So there are generally some nice things about the story. Um, the game mechanics are again, heavily inspired by Ascend Online. Like they're, it, it, Again, sometimes that just happens. Um, and the main character, but the main character in the story does take a different path. Um, he's still a spell sword. Um, he just focuses on like ice magic and eventually light magic, um, as opposed to what the main character in the set online does, which is it's just different. Um, there are still a lot of numbers, character sheets, abilities, and skill descriptions in this novel, so it is very crunchy. Um, overall, though, if the, there weren't these plagiarism issues in the story, I would say this would be a good story, but. Um, I just can't support plagiarism of any kind, even if it's in like some minor portions of the story. Um, it just it, there were literally sections of a Sentinel line that are copied and pasted to the story, which is like, again, super unfortunate because I feel like this is just a, a, a bad mistake by the author in, in doing this. He, like I said, he, he very early in the story says, and then the preface says, oh, I was heavily inspired by Sentinel line. Great. That's perfectly fine to be inspired by somebody. It is not okay to copy their text and put it in your story. It's just like, like it's such a, it, it's kind of a rookie move. I'm like, oh, that's, that's unfortunate because otherwise this would be, like I said, a relatively good story in my opinion. Um, but again, I, I can't support plagiarism and until the author changes the particular sections, um, it's going to get a bad score. It's for me, it gets a score of four to 10 just because plagiarism is not okay, even in like minor parts of the story. So that's unfortunate, but that is what, this particular novel gets. Like I said, I'll be more than happy to change the score or I'll look at it again later if the author actually changes the play to his parts. So there you go. Okay, on to our next story, uh, Urbanian Passage, a literary novel by Richter uh, Soler. So there you go. It is 290 pages, $2.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. Henry Gallagher used to be the best detective out there. 
Now he's all washed up. A Brodian Passage is an enemy with a deep pocket and a big tournament every year. When the top player is killed right before the big payout, Henry gets one more chance to solve a case and make a comeback. Problem? He's never played the game. And worse, the person that hires him is the prime suspect, the new top player, a stunningly beautiful woman. Henry can't shake the feeling she's as good at playing him as she is at playing the game. So honestly, not a, not a bad novel description, about this. And, and for the most part, it is fairly accurate. Um, however, unfortunately, this isn't actually a little RPG story. Um, there's about 12% in the entire you know 290 pages where the main character goes on quests and does any kind of leveling. But even when those instances, it's more along the lines of like, it's paragraphs saying, oh, he's going to go do this dungeon. And then paragraphs, there's like, oh, he's he's gone from level three to seven or three to nine or whatever it is. Um, and it's just like this summary of like, oh, just letting you know he level up for qualification reasons. And and even so it's like the, the scenes that are actual RPG, they don't matter to the story. They really don't. Um, and most of the other mentions of like things like levels or even the game itself um, don't really matter to the story and it kind of felt like to me at least that these things were just there so that the author can fill some kind of requirement to, to slap a little rpg on the cover um the other 80 percent 88 percent novel is a mystery where the main character searches for clues and learns about a vr game and a tournament um that don't again ultimately matter to the mystery but um that's what this story really is it really feels more like a cyberpunk mystery novel that happened part of the investigation where a good most of the investigation takes place in a game for some reason even though the murder was in real life um i like the detective goes and searches in this game for uh suspects and motivations and digital evidence i you know it's again it's it's one of those cyberpunk things that never really tropes that never really made sense to me like why a detective would have to go in the game to search for evidence for a killer when the killing happened in real life so for me, it didn't really work as far as like um, it being lit RPG, but in the detective section of it, not bad, really it isn't. Um, it's just not actually lit RPG. So there you go. Um, so again, because it's not score four out of 10, um, if I was just judging it as, I don't know, I'm not even sure if I could even call it game lit at this point, because again, there, even though there's a tournament, the main character is not participating in it. He's really just detective, uh, being a detective and looking at things and trying to find suspects. And it just happens to take place in MMO. Um, so if that's cool for you for Gamelet, I don't think it qualifies in, to me. But again, I'm, I'm not as interested in Gamelet as I am an actual libido, which this isn't. Um, but as a, as a mystery, I'd probably give like a 6 out of 10. I mean... It's not bad. It, 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 like plenty of red herrings, plenty of false leads, lots of speculation, all kinds of mystery-ish things. Uh, but as Little Bridgie, nope, sorry. Scored a four to 10, not actually. Uh, Urbani and Passage, a Little Bridgie mystery because it's not actually Little RPG. So there you go. Okay, on to Traveler's Own, a Little RPG YA Fantasy, The Revelation, Revelation Chronicles, book number two. Written by Chris uh, Pavesk. So there you go. Um, 170 pages, $4.99, not available on Kindle Unlimited. Um, so honestly, right off the bat, super expensive for the page count. Um, also not on Kindle Unlimited, so it's like not a lot of people are going to take a chance on this. And overall, it just honestly wasn't really worth it anyways. Um, here's the author's description, though. Escape from a world of darkness into a magical realm of limitless adventure. In Starter Zone... Cammy kept herself and her younger sister Albie alive in a post-apocalyptic world facing starvation, violence, and death on a daily basis. Cop at the military and forcefully inscribed, Cammy manages to scan the system and they enter the realm, a virtual reality world, as privileged players rather than slaves. They experience a world of safety, plenty, and magical adventure. Indeed, um, magic combat gear scores and quests and dungeons are all puzzles to be solved as Cammy continues her epic quest to navigate the realms and build a better life for her family but an intrusion from her old life threatens everything she has gained and imperils the entire virtual world so there we go now only half of that um novel description actually even applies to the story like the main um the mention of starter zone that's the first book in the series and again there was definitely a post-apocalyptic section there um that does not exist in this particular story of a book two and that's kind of the thing that i missed the most to be honest uh book one again had had like this really interesting premise of a post-apocalyptic world where water's the enemy um there were still you know the traditional post-apocalyptic threats of like scavengers and raiders and slavers and you know things like that but water was essentially the enemy in this story because um there was a tech uh, technological revolution where um instead of 
encoding things on computers, things were encoded into water. Um, so computer systems were, were, were so advanced that they could be encoded in like a, a big thing of water and it would be, uh, have the power to like fulfill an entire virtual reality of your world. And so, you know, rich people had their entire minds transcribed and they, and they basically lived in these virtual worlds, their bodies would decayed. Uh, but then at some point those water systems broke and they went back into the normal water table. And so they went crazy in those systems and it was like, uh, almost like the zombie virus kind of thing going on where like the water, if you drank it and it was unfiltered or and like cleaned or unboiled, or whatever the case was, you'd be sent to become like this weird zombie character. And it's like, oh, that's a really interesting twist. Unfortunately, not again, none of that exists in the second book because the main characters are stuck in the game. Um, it's like in a virtual reality game um, outside of that post-apocalyptic world anymore. So everything in this particular story is just in this like kind of kiddish game and it's not it's not a very good i mean it, i'm sure it's a fine game um but it's not it's not particularly grown up uh it, it's very i think I, I described it in book on the first book in the brief first book as very narnia-esque and book two isn't that much different um there aren't any really serious threats to the main character in book number two um and it kind of continues that idealism uh, uh from the game section of, of book number one unfortunately uh the main character cammy she sends her sister and her and her and their pet to off to school so they're kind of out of the story at this point um and and she's supposed to be facing like greater challenges that shape her as a person and let her know about her magic and her character classes and all the good stuff um as she goes into like the traveler zone which is the next section after the starter zone um in the story and unfortunately again she's not, i don't think she's really challenged because she actually becomes like this half-baked pacifist, um, intentionally trying to move conflicts that might try to force her to kill NPCs and other creatures that don't respond. And while there's some interesting travel scenes, most of the story is dialogue, and it's a bunch of non-combat quests. And the few fights just aren't really particularly exciting. And that was kind of one of the criticisms for book number one that I have, is that once they got in the game, the story kind of got more boring. And this entire novel is just in the game and the game is not entertaining. And so it's unfortunate. Um, so for me, it just wasn't a good book. Uh, I mean, it's not a bad book, not badly written in any shape. It just wasn't exciting. It was kind of boring for me. Uh, and so for me, it gets a score of five out of 10. So there you go. It's, it's kind of a mess story. Uh, Traveler Zone, a lit RPG YE fantasy, the Revelation Chronicles book number two with a score of five out of 10. There you go. Okay, on to our next book. It is gonna be Coast on Fire, the System Apocalypse book number three, uh, book number five, written by Tao Wong. Um, it is uh, 346 pages. Four hundred and four dollars and ninety nine cents. It is on Kindle Unlimited, and I'm doing double check to make sure I said the right author name. Yeah, Taiwan. Okay, just had a double check. Um, so three hundred forty six pages, four dollars ninety nine cents available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. Reluctant ruler of the settlements in British Columbia, John and his friends must now face even greater dangers as they seek to free other human settlements in the galactic control. Uh, in North America, but John's enemies have begun to take notice of the burgeoning resistance and take steps to stop him and the human resistance, including bringing in master class help. Can John navigate the treacherous waters of the galactic politics and human interest without compromising his beliefs or sacrificing his friends? So there you go. Um, not bad. And actually, th that particular novel script really does describe mostly like the first, I want to say 30-ish, 40% of the story. Um, Book five in the series here starts off with a lot of talking. Um, there's less action at the beginning of the story, and there's more upkeep about how the main character is dealing with being a leader suddenly, and individual like communities that he controls, how their needs versus his capacity to manage it all. There's more politics, alliances, and maneuvering, political maneuvering among factions, and in, in both human and like aliens. Um, and the main character is looking to free like North American cities or specifically Canadian cities uh, from aliens and alien influences like the galactic influences uh, because he realizes basically that, oh, once they get a hold of these sections of land on Earth, they, the only way to get them out is to actually go to war with them. And so it's easier if he can maintain human control of these sections sect and cities before these these uh, galactic entities come in and essentially take over the earth um however I, I don't want you to think there aren't any fights there are a lot of good fights they're just not the beginning of the story so if you get to the beginning and you find all the politics and negotiating stuff not to your taste like i did i'm not really a big fan of politics and like faction stuff like that um but once i get to the middle of the story and especially at the end lots of good action lots of good fights so that, that action and stuff still exists in the story it's just not in the beginning for the most part so just 
<laughs> go through it. Um, overall, again, it's a fine book. Uh, and it's, again, it's a, it's a very action-ish story, not as action-y as the other parts, uh, other novels in the series. Um, and again, the beginning is a little slow because of this political maneuvering section. Uh, but again, there are still some very large scale PVP and like, um, I want to say guild versus guild or faction versus faction kind of sections. Um, and like they're really larger scale um, and the battles are good. They're exciting. They're very, you know, RPG-ish kind of stuff. Uh, with alien powers and lasers and kinds of good stuff there. Um, but again, it doesn't really happen with the mid end of the story. So, but again, overall had a good time with it. Um, gets a score of 7.2 out of 10. This is probably the lowest score I've given this particular series since it started. And that's again, that's most because I'm not really into the politics portion of the story, which is a good section of the beginning part of it. So there you go. That's 7.2 out of 10 for coast on fire. The system apocalypse book number five. Okay. On to the wang is the hardest part. It is, uh, let's see, you know, I forgot to, I forgot to pull it up. Um, it's less than 50 pages. I don't actually have a page count from Amazon, but I'll read you the author description. Um, after a hard night's drinking, Tim and the Caverns and Creatures gang find themselves abandoned and left for dead on a deserted island. They soon discover, however, that the island may not be as deserted as it seems. In order to survive, they will need to search within themselves and travel to some very dark places. This is a standalone story in the Caverns and Creatures universe. Give it a try and see if the CNC series is right for you. It's two dollars and ninety cents. Again, it's probably about fifty pages. Um, but again, that was. It's so new that it doesn't have an actual page on Amazon. Um, it is also available on Kindle Unlimited. So, um, short review essentially funny uh, most of these short stories from Robert Bowen are always really funny however the humor is very much um, guilt geared towards inappropriateness sex jokes poop jokes potty humor um, cursing galore and all that exists in this particular story this one in particular um, is very much focused on um, penises masturbation jokes like there's seriously a ton of masturbation jokes at the beginning of this novel like a lot uh, so if that's not something that's super hilarious to you um, it doesn't make you giggle <laughs> like it does me just thinking about it um, this is not the series for you this is not the novel for you for you so uh, just be just be aware of that but again this is all mostly just like making these characters um from the main caverns and creature series you might recognize as critical failures that series uh they go in these little side adventures that are again completely standalone um they often start off with oh we woke up drunk and go on an adventure some stuff happens uh so it's, I, I i always thought the robert Rebecca has an amazing um marketing opportunity you know job that he's done here with releasing these in between like the larger series stories so that you get people hooked on these stories they find them entertaining and they're really short um commitments of time and money and it's a good way to find out whether this series on the whole is for you or not um for me i had a good time with it very entertaining super funny to me um but i'm into that kind of humor i guess uh so for me it gets a score of seven out of ten it's a really easy score most of these usually do so there you go that's again the wing is the hardest part caverns and creatures with a score of seven out of ten so there you go Okay, on to our next review. It's going to be The Song Mistress, The Little Bitty Journey, uh, Uniworld Online <laughs> Trilogy, book number two, written by Jonathan Brooks. It is 253 pages, $3.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. After the events which caused Candace to lose consciousness with Uniworld Online, she was now being monitored by the company in charge of the game, Unitech. This surveillance meant that the fledgling Sun Maiden had to watch what abilities she used within the game. Otherwise, she might attract the wrong kind of attention and be accused of cheating or hacking. Despite these setbacks, Candace, a cadence rather, is joined once again by her friends, uh, Bernadette and Wengela, as well as Mura, the grateful young woman whom they nearly saved from being sacrificed to the corrupted druids. With their new gear and a renewed drive to find and punish the player killers who had killed Cadence, they journeyed onward, getting stronger and picking up allies along the way. But danger is just around the corner as they learn that Brendare and the mysterious Bard are being hunted by guilds wanting to know the secrets behind their winning dungeon run. And when Cadence and her party are forced to quickly make their way towards Lightforge, the human capital city, they're presented with a whole new challenge, crafting. With everything going on within the game, Cadence is ecstatic because her new body in the world is also healing faster than her doctors had expected. In addition to her limbs recovering from the abuse they suffered at the hands of her attackers, something else is starting to heal, which will change her life forever. Uh, okay, so that last part's probably a little bit of a stretch. It does happen in the story, but again, it's not as a big of a deal yet as, as the description might make it out to be uh this is the second book of the series has a good follow-up to the first book um th this is still essentially 
not it's essentially the same story structure as book one it's essentially a slice of life story um with the main character focusing on the in-game story where she's going to various adventures she's building up her character um she her rpg barred character is is getting a little overpowered um but it's still fun and she's still squishy so it's not like she's not in danger but her bar powers are definitely um probably the most overpowered bar powers i've ever scene written about but it's still a very fun story like essentially it's a lot of fighting a lot of adventure a lot of like interesting little small stories that are connected by uh the main character and her 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 party um trying to re-level her um so it i guess if you've read book one and you liked it you're probably gonna like book two because there's less of a of a negative setup in the beginning and the setup for the story where she for some reason can't speak in real life and then when she goes in the game she suddenly can um that that setup um is less used so it's less of a frustrating uh, uh premise for the story it, it just it just drops her into the novel and you just go into the picture there so uh it, 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 it's a good slice of life story um there are real life advancements in the storyline with the game company thing going on um there is a cliffhanger ending which might frustrate some people might just encourage others to want to read book three a little bit more um but it is it, it is there it is what it is overall the fun time reading this um and that's to me the most important part of any kind of <laughs> review story if i had a good time and i did here i get to score a 7.4 out of 10 the song mistress the liberty journey uniworld online trilogy book number two we get again a score of 7.4 out of 10 so there you go okay on to shard wraith a little bit of novel crystal shards online book number three written by rick scott uh it is 439 pages four dollars 99 cents it is available on kindle limited and here's the author's description what darkness within the labyrinth awaits after defeating the shadow king and opening the gateway to the mysterious labyrinth of onizoso reese's hopes are dashed when a surprise attack leave his girlfriend's life hanging in the balance to save her, Reese and his friends must enter the labyrinth in hopes of finding the one person who may be able to spring her back to life. But in a place where players turn to shard race, their hopes may already be lost. Now, Reese will have to navigate a strange new world fraught with dangers while fending off a pursuing army and racing against the clock. And with his arch nemesis lurking just outside, the labyrinth might be the only might be only the start of his troubles. To protect the ones he loves, Reese will have to challenge both his fears and principles or risk losing everything and becoming a shard wraith himself. But the labyrinth holds many dark secrets and what he discovers within may not only change the outcome of the mission, but redefine the very nature of the game itself. So, okay, that's a little epic-ish sounding for this story, but it's uh, it's not completely unfounded. Uh, this is a good third book in the series that has all the action adventure that tends have come to love and expect in the series. However, uh, at the same time, you can tell that this series is heading towards a conclusion um, because they were finding some very well-deserved resolutions to some conflicts, including emotional ones, political conflicts, and physical conflicts. So there is actually resolution happening finally in the story. Um, there are also some good comics to out from book one that I kind of forgot about. And I feel like the author is really making sure he's starting to tie up some of these loose ends. Um, Story-wise, it's a good portion of them focused on following the main characters through the labyrinth storyline and to find somebody who... who can resurrect their fallen friend, which, in my opinion, is kind of a wand wavy thing in the first place. Like, oh, they're gonna go into this thing, and then suddenly she's dead. I'm like, okay, that's that's a forced conflict, but whatever. It it is it is good motivation for the main characters to continue on. Um, they let's see the but the story isn't there the entire time. Um, there's still a real life storyline there, even though it's a lot smaller than it was in book one or even book two. Um, with 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 the community for that main character is from like trying to decide what they're gonna do about their diminishing resources and hints about some political infighting which again wasn't as interesting to me because i'm not into politics and that kind of storyline stuff but again it, it, it's interesting for folks who enjoy it um game mechanic wise pretty much the same as it is for the other two books there are a couple very big wand wavy moments in the story where like the main character should have died and he kind of kneels his way out of it like neo for the matrix um but again they're 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 while they exist and they were a little annoying for me, they weren't so bad that um, it ruined the story. Uh, they were just like, oh, that's that's an author who's getting his main character out of trouble, you know, with author padding or what is it called? A uh, plot armor or something. Uh, so it is what it is. Uh, it it less than my enjoyment of the novel a little bit, but again, it's still a good story. And it follows the rules that it's established for the most part. And again, good action. 
good adventure. They're using a little bit of town building in the story as well. Um, so it was nice to see like a little bit of a change of pace again in the storyline. So for me, it gets a score 7.5 out of 10. Uh, that's Shard Wraith, a little bit novel, Crystal Shards Online book number three with a nice score 7.5 out of 10. So there we go. Okay, on to our last review for Song Book One, Anthem of Infinity, um, written by Blaze Corvin and Outspan Foster. This is a collaborative effort between the two authors. It is 316 pages. It is $5.96. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here are the author's descriptions. Description. It has been two years since the shift when most technologies stopped working and the laws of physics changed. Humanity has been brought to its knees. Like other survivors, Noah Henson has heard rumors of the ales. Among other guesses, predatory aliens seem as good as any other theory for what caused the shift. But for Noah, everything else takes second place to survival, sometimes even self-respect, or any sort of decency. Lawless, post-apocalyptic America has forced Noah to make many difficult decisions, and he has never seemed to choose correctly. However, despite beside hating himself, he doesn't have the strength or the courage to change. He will get a lucky break in a big way, though. A mysterious orb with otherworldly powers. In time, perhaps Noah will find another path. And if he does die during the shift, maybe it won't be the end of his story. Sometimes, another chance can be an opportunity for redemption. So there we go. Some very vague, uh, very vague descriptions of the novel. Um, it does essentially say that it starts out as a post-apocalyptic story, um, or even like I guess a current pop apocalyptic story. Um, but that's that's what it starts out as. Um, this is a great novel, and I said that intentionally. It, it it gets to be great, but I I'll be honest, I almost stopped reading it about the twenty five percent mark in the story. That's when there's this big uh, twist in the story, and I'm not going to ruin it for anybody by by saying what it is. Um, but it shifts this novel from being an apocalypse story, which is like what the cover kind of implies as well, to being something else. It actually shifts genres in the like subgenres in the little RV. Um, so I'm like, it, it was such a big shift for me personally that I was just like, wait, huh? What? Um, and in my notes, I, there's a lot of like WTS, like what what's happening here? <laughs> Because it was, like I said, it's a really big, sh- it's kind of a, an unexpected genre shift. And if you look at the reviews of the story, um, some people really love it. Some people don't. Like some people, what, <laughs> this is the place where they stop because they're like, oh, this doesn't make sense. I give up. Um, and for me, even for me, and I, I love both of these authors. I think they're both really good. Uh, Blaze Corbin is his friend of mine. I've authored even a couple of times and talked to him other places. Um, and, 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 and Antoine Foster is a really good guy. So I, I've enjoyed his work. Um, so for me, when I, when I hit this point, I was like, okay, I had to put the book down, take a break. I'm like, okay, I trust these authors. I like the stru- other stuff that they've written. Dover Jealousy is one of my favorite series. Um, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to trust these guys and that, that, that they know what they're doing, that they're, they're good storytellers. And I was super happy that I did because this is a, like I said, it's a great story. It becomes, even though, like there's this shift of the 25% mark. And prior to that, there's not a ton of little RPG stuff. And it really is just like mostly like a, a main character that's hard to root for, um, and 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 who's cowardly and snivelly, and he makes a bunch of like really like bad decisions. Um, and and it it turns out that it's that all that stuff in the twenty five percent mark before the twenty five percent mark is all set up. It's all set up for the story that comes after it. And at that twenty percent mark, there's that shift that changes the story as as it is in a lot of stories. Um, and and it all plays out. It all turns out to be set up so that when the main character changes for the rest of the novel, it, it's a it's a really good setup for 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 those changes, I should say. Um, and it makes those changes more um, more prominent and more important uh, as you see the main character change. Um, and so this, like I said, it's a great story. Um, but again, it's it's the first twenty five percent. It might be hard for some people to get through because again, it's not very RPG ish. It really just feels like a standard post-apocalyptic story and then oh he gets an orb which reminds me a little bit of dolo's orb or but he gets like the first hints of an rpg power and then as after that summer things shift and it becomes completely RP, you know liberty for the rest of the story so it is a little bitty story i don't want you to think it isn't um and it, it's hard for me to describe how it gets better without spoiling it for people but again it, it it does um so i guess trust the author trust the reviewer in saying that it, it's an enjoyable story um, even though like that shift of the 24 mark is is super surprising um uh it keep going through it 
go enjoy the story and hopefully as you go through you'll be like oh you like me you're like oh this gets good and then you're like oh this gets really good and then like oh this is great by the end of the story i was rooting for the main character to win i was like seeing all the payoff for all the setup for the rest of the story and like seeing how things played out and how it ties back into the beginning of the novel by the very end i'm like oh, okay this all makes sense this is really great i'm like oh this is awesome i'm glad i stuck with it um so there you go like I said, I, i've talked about all the things I think I can uh, without spoiling things for people because then part of I think the charm of this particular story is is that first twist and how it plays out for the rest of the story and how it all develops. So you, can, you can definitely see some place in this novel where you're like, oh, I think that was Blaze Rising. I'm like, oh, I think that was Outspan Foster writing. And there are definitely some mixes of some um, <laughs> of some writing styles and some points of view. Uh, so it, it was very interesting for me to read. But again, I, I thought it was so good uh, at this point. I'm like, oh, this, this becomes something great because of how different it is and how how it mixing subgenres uh within the little rpg story that's that, that's still there um i'm like so for me it was different for me it really worked out well i can't promise it's gonna be the same way for you because i can't tell you what changes and that that, that smaller from um so there you go that that's all i can say um if you want to know exactly what this is like what i'm talking about and you don't mind spoilers there's a facebook group called spoil Rant readers where we've already kind of broken down everything that's happened so if you want to go check that out there that's perfectly up to you um but that's kind of the only way you're gonna get the any extra info for me for me it gets a score of eight out of ten for the first song book one anthem of infinity book number one um with a score of eight out of ten so there you go. that's the highest score of the show with an eight out of ten so thank you everyone that's it we're done that's the end of the show uh thank you one for everyone for listening for watching remember you can find us on uh, facebook on twitter on youtube on patreon or our webpage at littlebittypodcast.com where we have, a, again, a whole database of little RPG reviews that we've done and collected for you folks in case you want to find something good and interesting to read. Uh, we also have links in the show notes for other Facebook groups um, for little RPG, so go check them out as well. And, of course, if you want to support the podcast in any way, shape, or form, you can find all the ways to do so at littlerpgpodcast.com slash support. But, again, thanks for hanging out with me today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, until we can hang out again, remember to go read some little RPG.